Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patsala. Myself, Parthapotim Bora, from Department of Sociology, Dibugar University, Assam. Today, we'll be discussing the module Sociology of Pierre Bourdieu from the paper Contemporary Social Theory. We have already discussed the module of Pierre Bourdieu, which provided an introduction to the basic concept of Pierre Bourdieu. This is the second module in the series where we will be discussing sociology of Pierre Bourdieu. In that context, we will be basically focusing on the study of the class, education, intellectual and reflexive sociology of Pierre Bourdieu and how these were analyzed in the context of French society. So we know that the major contribution of the concept that were developed by the Pierre Bourdieu were cultural capital, habitus, feel, etc. But these were extensively used by the Pierre Bourdieu in the study of the French society, which we'll do in a detailed manner in this module. One of the important understanding of the Pierre Bourdieu is his understanding of class. The significance that or the importance that the Pierre Bourdieu gave to the understanding of class can be seen from the fact that for him class constitute universal principle of explanation. Thereby he was basically giving the universal existence of the class or on the other hand he was basically putting emphasis on the significance of the class as a category of understanding. But in such an understanding he was critical of the Marxian understanding of class because the Marxian understanding of class fails to provide the understanding of classes on paper into the understanding of the classes in reality. On the other hand, we cannot use our theoretical understanding of class in order to explain the class that exists in the reality. So as a result, because the objective opportunities or the subjective disposition that basically characterize a class cannot be explained empirically on the basis of available theories. That's why Pierre Bourdieu basically critical of the Marxian understanding of class as I already mentioned he criticized Marx because he failed to see the classes on paper to the classes on reality. Pierre Bourdieu defined class on the basis of three important dimensions. One is the volume of the capital, second is the composition of the capital and third is the social trajectory. Thus, volume of the capital, the composition of the capital and the social trajectory are the three most important components that define class for Pierre Bourdieu. On the other hand, the work of Pierre Bourdieu on class is also defined from the other worker, especially the work of Karl Marx understanding of class or Max Weber understanding of class in another important dimension. That is how he saw the correlation between the cultural practices and the class distinction. On the other hand, Pierre Bourdieu saw a clear correlation between the cultural distinction and the class position. It means that it is a cultural distinction which determines the class position of an individual. So in that context, we see his work as a kind of uh, defined trajectory to that of the work that was done by the Weber of the Marx. Again, Pierre Bourdieu also reject the Marxian understanding of class, which was basically the understanding of class in terms of relation of production. Because according to Pierre Bourdieu, we cannot understand class only in the single dimension or only in the single causal analysis. That was the understanding of class only in terms of economics. So as a result, Bourdieu was critical of the Marx understanding of class. On the other hand, he said that we need to understand class with the basis of the habitus, which is normally associated with the position. Thus, the habitus formed an important component of the understanding of class for the Bourdieu. It is basically the habitus which determines the social position of an individual, which is the most important factor for determining class for the Bourdieu. In that context, because the habitus or the social position is associated with the many factor or with the high statistical probability, as a result, it is not explainable to the single factor that is the economy which was seen in case of Marxian understanding of class. In such a way, 
theory Bourdieu understanding of class departs a lot from the Marxian understanding of class when Bourdieu give emphasis on the habitus which basically a kind of multi-causal analysis in, that is defined from that of the Marxian understanding of class which is a single causal analysis. On the other hand, Pierre Bourdieu also provide a critical interpretation to the Weberian understanding of class. In fact, Bourdieu's understanding of class is defined from the Weberian understanding of class when he re-look into the concept of class and status that was done by the Weber. While the Weberian understanding of class is dependent on the lifestyle, but Bourdieu argues that classes appear as status group in everyday life. So what is important for the Bourdieu is how class as appear as a status in our everyday life rather than how the class and status was seen into the lifestyle on the basis of the Weberian understanding. On the other hand, that it is a relational approach to the class that form an important component for the understanding of class by the Bourdieu. It is basically a relation that exists among the individual in the class is the important factor for determining the class position. Bourdieu's understanding of social class not only provides a critical understanding of prevailing Marxian and Weberian understanding of class, but also provides a new way of conceptualizing class. His understanding of forms of capital and the nature of habitus and its significance in the formation of class is worth mentioning. So, how the various forms of capital and as well as the habitus form the important component of the class is another important factor how his understanding of class was defined from that of the earlier understanding of the class that was provided by the Marx or Weber. It is a, the role or the important role that was played by the cultural capital as well as the nature of habitus. So as we already mentioned how the habitus is associated with the socialization. On the other hand, the cultural capital is associated with the, cal, the capital that is acquired by the culture of an individual. And all, do, all this factor play an important role in determining the nature of class as it is understood by Bourdieu. And as a result, his understanding of class differs a lot from the Marxian understanding of class or Weberian understanding of class. Next, we will be discussing Bourdieu and his understanding of education and social inequality. One of the important sociological contribution of Pierre Bourdieu is his work of sociology of education. In fact, the sociology of education that was the work done by Pierre Bourdieu help us to understand how the culture and the role that is played by the education in controlling inequality in the society and the privileges in the contemporary society. In fact, it is basically the, how the inequality or the privileges are not equally distributed in the society because of the education was beautifully explained by the Pierre Bourdieu's work in the sociology of education. Bourdieu used sub substantial concept from the French education field to show how the socially segmented nature of the French education as well as fr French faculties or the university faculties is basically because of the education. In fact, he basically shows how in the French society there is a segmented nature in the French education system as well as in the university faculty. And this inequality that is seen in the French education system or in the university faculty is perpetuated because of the education. So it is the inequality and the relation that is associated with the education is one of the significant sociological contribution of the Pierre Bourdieu in the field of sociology of education. In his understanding of sociology of education, Pierre Bourdieu beautifully used his concept of habitus and cultural capital in order to understand the nature of stratification that exists in the French education system. On the other hand, it is basically the habitus and the culture that play an important role. On the other hand, how the habitus and the cultural capital work as a basis for creating inequality or stratification in the French education system is one of the important objective of his study. Bourdieu says that basically the hierarchy or the inequality that exists in the French education system is a reflection of the economic or the cultural capital. 
on the other hand we know that there is inequality or there is an inequality of struggle in the economic and the cultural capital and he said that this inequality of the economic and the cultural capital is reflected or manifested in the French education system. On the other hand, Pierre Bourdieu also argues that education system helps in the perpetuation of the inequality in the institutionalized form. On the other hand, there are many social inequality in our society. What Pierre Bourdieu was arguing, it was basically the system of education which helped in the manifestation of the inequality in our society in an institutionalized form. That institutionalization of inequality is perpetuated by the education and that was the critical understanding provided by Pierre Bourdieu in the field of sociology of education. On the other hand, another important contribution of the Pierre Bourdieu in the sociology of education is basically the relative autonomy of education from the outside institution. By the relative autonomy of education from the outside institution, Pierre Bourdieu basically talking about the self-reproductive capacity of the education. It is basically how the education as a system reproduces itself, how the education as a system can reproduce the inequality in the society. On the other hand, how education as a system can be relatively autonomous to reproduce the inequality in the society is the important component of the study of Pierre Bourdieu. As a result, he sees education in terms of his self-reproductive capacity and he defined that as a relative autonomy of education system. Next, we will discuss Pierre Bourdieu's understanding of intellectual. We know that the deep interest that the Bourdieu have in the concept of cultural capital, cultural production, symbolic violence and stratification also created his interest in the study of intellectual. It is because these are the some of the important component which help in a way to the formation of the intellectual class. Say for example, Pierre Bourdieu says intellectual as that those people who play an important role because of their dominant position and this dominant position that is acquired by the intellectual class is because of the large number of cultural capital and his studies mainly associated with the various intelligentsia class like that of the artist, writer, academics, etc. He said that these are the some section of the societies who are academician and who are the intellectual because they possess these characteristics because of their cultural capital and this make them the intellectual in our society. On the other hand, Pierre Bourdieu also talk about a distinctive nature of the intellectual it is the aristocratic asceticism. It is because of the nature of habitus, that is the intellectual habitus of the, it is because it is the nature of habitus of the intellectual, that is the intellectual habitus, which make them aristocratic asceticism, which is due to the possession of cultural capital. He said that the nature of habitus, that is of the intellectual is distinct in nature, and it is characterized by the possession of the cultural capital. And this distinctive habitus of the intellectual make them aristocratic asceticism. Bourdieu also talk about the significance of the distinction in the formation of hierarchy in the intellectual field and he also see how it works as an arena of struggle for the intellectual. It is because the distinction that can be seen in terms of acquisition of the book grant or acquisition of the projects which plays an important role in the nature of hierarchy that exists in the intellectual field. And he said that it is basically the distinction which determine the arena of struggle for the intellectual. The struggle that exists among the intellectual is because of this distinction. As I already gave the example, what are the number of books that are produced by an intellectual, number of research projects, etc. On the other hand, Pierre Bourdieu also sees the role of the intellectual in the society. And it is the important role of the intellectual in the production of theory of society. And as Bourdieu argued, the production of the theory of society is the most important component of the intellectual because it is the production of the theory of the society that help us to know the nature of society. Another distinctive contribution of Bourdieu was his reflexive sociology. Reflexive sociology is a manifestation of combination of both empirical as well as theoretical work whereby there is a changing representation of the object 
and the reformulation and the meaning of the object practically scientific and epistemologically relevant and the significance. For Bourdieu, the reflexive sociology basically includes the combination of both empirical as well as theoretical work. Here, Bourdieu basically tries to see the reflexivity in terms of how sociology try to critically look at the researcher position along with the object of enquiry. So it is a reflexivity how the researcher position needs to be seen in terms of the object that he is want to study. So that critical position of the researcher in relation to the object of study provides the understanding of reflexive sociology for the Bourdieu. Bourdieu idea of theory of practice help us in understanding his idea of reflexivity. Bourdieu called for a reflexive criticism of the academic knowledge. For him, there is a need of reflexive criticism of economic knowledge in order to have the theory of practice. That is, the theory of practice which help us to understand the idea of reflexivity basically manifested with the help of reflexive criticism of the economic knowledge. On the other hand, the reflexivity drive of all the work of Bourdieu provides us an understanding of the idea of reflexivity, asks the important question how the intellectual field position in terms of our particular political or individual position can affect our reading, the production of social science. It means that we as an individual, because of our political or individual position, can have some influence on the reading. And as such influence, it can also affect the production of the social science. So, to have a reflexive sociology, it means to understand the position or the political position as well as the academic position that we have that we are using in the reading or the production of the social science. On the other hand, Bourdieu also says that reflexive study of the French university in his work of Homo academicus, whereby he, there can be the problem when scientific account of the social world is read, read non-reflexively and interpreted as insider. So there is a need to have reflexive understanding if the individual is a part of the system. So that reflexive understanding can do away with the problem of insider in a particular system. Another important idea that we will discuss now with reference to Bourdieu is sociology in question. Sociology in question is one of the important contributions of Pierre Bourdieu. It basically provides us an important basis for the conceptualization of sociology. Bourdieu tries to see how sociology as a science differ from other as sociology needs to be accessible. So, he says sociology is defined because the nature of accessibility that is required for the sociology which make it different from the other science. But he says sociology as a science because it do have a distinctive method or concept or there is a assets for the verification of procedure that make sociology science. So, Sociology as a science, it is distinct from the other science, but it also have the characteristics of science as I already mentioned, the presence of various methods, the concept as well as verifiability of the concept or the method in the sociology that make the sociology science. But that may be problematic if we try to see the similarity of sociology with the other natural science in a similar manner, but it is basically the distinctive characteristics that make the sociology as a science. Bourdieu also tries to draw extensively on the work of objectivity of the sociologies. He says that the specificity or what is called the uniqueness of the sociology lies in the fact that objectivity of the sociologies play an important role in the study of the sociology because it tries to see how the object of study for the sociologies not only form the field of class struggle, but it also the field of scientific struggle itself. So it means that the object that the sociologists are studying, it is on, on the one hand, they are the object of the class struggle. On the other hand, they are also the object for the scientific struggle. And that is the unique question of objectivity that is associated with the study of the sociologists. And that is one of the another important contribution of the Bourdieu. On the other hand, Bourdieu argues that the nature of subject matter of the sociology is because of the various problems. For such, context it is said that 
the various facts which are not only hidden but they are repressed as well and this is another unique nature of the sociology because there can be some fact or there can be some object in sociologies which are repressed or hidden and that repressed or the hidden object or the sub object of our study in sociology make the sociology unique. So in that context the sociology in question that is the important work of Bourdieu sees how there is the question of objectivity, how the question of science that is how the sociology as a science is defined from the other sciences but the sociology also is defined because of the unique character how it need to be maintained accessibility. So it means the sociology need to be accessible on the one hand but it also maintains a scientific position. The scientific position is distinct in nature because of the nature of the unique concept, unique method or the unique verifiability method that are the part of sociology. On the other hand, it is basically the question of objectivity that is associated with the object as I already mentioned, how the object need to be seen in terms of class struggle as well as scientific struggle. So as a result, because of this unique contribution of Bourdieu in the context of sociology or how he presented sociology as a unique science that formed the sociology in question an important contribution for the Bourdieu. So in this module, we have an understanding of the sociology of Pierre Bourdieu. Bourdieu's understanding of the work can be seen from the fact that how he used the various concepts like culture, the concept of habitus, the concept of feel in the various uh, aspect of the French society. Say for example, on the one hand, we already discussed how in the French education field, Bourdieu tried to use this concept. So he clearly shows how the French education system maintain hierarchy. On the other hand, how the French education system represent or manifest social inequality in terms of possession of cultural capital on the other hand, on the present, other hand, the, the presence of habitats. He also talked about how the inequality in the French education system as well as in the university faculty because of this context. And all these questions lead to his interesting argument of reflexive sociology. So how he tried to combine both theory as well as empirical context in the understanding of reflexive sociology. So his practice of sociology is a reflexive in the nature that he tries to combine both theory as well as empirical fact. On the other hand, in the last part, we basically discussed the question of sociology, how the sociology is unique, how sociology as a science need to be seen in its uniqueness, character of science, and how it provides an important contribution. So the significance that does lies in the work of Bourdieu is that it provides a totally new understanding of sociology. His understanding of sociology is defined from his predecessor. That on the other hand, it also provided a new ground for the other workers to see sociology not only as a kind of uh, abstract thing, but it tries to combine both theory as well as empirical thing. So in that context, we can see the significance of work of Bourdieu. And although we know that initially there was a less influence of Bourdieu because of the writing in the French, which was having very less influence in the American world. But later on, over the years, because of the translation or the large translation of the Bourdieu work, it significantly had a, drawn the inspiration according to it. because of the large translation of the work of Bourdieu in the in the later part of the last century, it was basically influencing the various intellectual field. Now we see that the work of Bourdieu is, will continue to influence a body of the scholar, a body of scholarship will try to have a critical understanding of the nature of sociology, what are the important questions or what are the important understanding that we need to focus with the emerging concept and as a result I think this unit will be helpful for you and for further references you can study the details of the work that was written by the Bourdieu as well as the critical commentaries that are available which are given extensively at the end of the module. Thank you.